Okay, it was pretty clear that the Niners were the better team yesterday, but if you look at the playoff picture this morning, it's still the Eagles who would have home field advantage in the bye. Fascinating, because you look to that third column. Cowboys play the Eagles next week. Yep. Cowboys win that game. Suddenly they're both 10 and three, and we've got action for the final few weeks. And it could be the Cowboys either with the one seed or the two seed or the Niners pump up to the one seed. It's fascinating. The NFC up top, a lot of characters. Ooh. Eagles, though, come in limping to this one against the Cowboys after a bad loss. Certainly not the momentum the Eagles would want to take to Dallas when they go to play the Cowboys next week. Um, if you want to hear us talk about how great the 49ers were, you go to the start of Good Morning Football. That's how we started our show. Now we turn the page to cause for concern for the Philadelphia Eagles because if you get beat at home 42-19, to Jason, there must be some. Yeah, you try not to overblow, and less. They, they got whooped. It was not pretty at all. We look at the way the 49ers handled the Cowboys when they first played them, and it was very mm -hmm. ugly. And now we're looking at the Cowboys right now who are absolutely rolling. The tough thing is you watch that game for the Eagles, and then you look at what's next because you see that game, and, yes, they played three games in 13 days. They played the Chiefs, then they played the Bills. That game went to overtime, and then they had to welcome the 49ers in who were coming off a Thursday game who had plenty of rest to what Kyle was mentioning. But now this week they go on the road to Dallas. After that, they go on the road to Seattle. So it's not as if it's getting any easier. And oh yeah, Dallas is coming off a Thursday night game as well. I think the tough thing is you look at Philly and you're trying and you're talking about their defense. And yes, they gave up a lot of points to the Buffalo Bills, and now they gave up a lot of points to the 49ers. There's question marks of how they tackled in yeah. this game in the second half or whether they were interested or not. Philly on defense looked like a team that was absolutely tired, that played 90-plus plays against the Buffalo Bills. Okay. And to come out there and say, oh, that was an excuse, they were just tired. No, it's not an excuse, but it is reality. I think for this game, I don't look at this and say, all right, Philly's in trouble. They need to fix X, Y, and Z and all of these different things. The thing about Philadelphia is they have found ways to win games, close score games. And I mentioned it earlier in the season. We killed Minnesota all last year because they were winning games by small margins. And we said, you know what? This is going to come back to bite them. Okay. The difference is for Philly, as they were in the Super Bowl last year, they have players on this team that won a Super Bowl in 2017. They have figured out and they know how to win some of these games and they have gotten over the hump before. The tough thing to me now is you look at what they've had and they were the number one seed still, but now you're going on the road to Dallas, on the road to Seattle. Can they overcome that to be able to still have that number one seed going into the playoffs? Uh, you know what? It's funny. It's like, are you concerned about the football, sure, but there's so many things that were going in the Niners' favor. They were healthy, and also they had a 10 days wait, which you mm -hmm. said. What concerns me is for if they meet next time, any psychological edge is now gone. Yeah. I mean, they had this thing like, well, we don't lose at home. We don't lose in this building. Our fans are the craziest in the building. Like, mm -hmm. all right, we're made. Oh, and we'll beat you up in the trenches. All that was is gone. Like, the 49ers dominated them in the trenches. For all the talk we do about Kelsey and Lane Johnson and Maya Lotta, this was as one-sided a matchup as it could be when it comes to defense and offensive line. When you flip it the other way, the Eagles defensive line, we heard so much about Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis and all that. Yeah, they couldn't even get to Purdy. So to me, it was, it, you click the boxes here. Home field advantage, well, okay, fine. If we gotta go to Philadelphia again, we beat them 42 fine. to 19 in their building. All right, weather, all right, so what? Fine. It was raining, we, we took care of them. Oh, but they beat us in the playoffs last year. Nah, we crushed you. And oh, but but we're the tough guys with the lunch pails and the, the push tush. We beat you 42 to 19, and we basically dragged you across the field for for 60 minutes. Um, all the psychological edge is now gone going into next time. If there's anything that could even be possibly lingering there. Yeah, you know, San Francisco looks awesome. I've talked about this a couple times this morning, so I want to mention it. Seth Joyner, Eagles great, goes on after the game. It's his job to talk about it. He's at a desk. He's got the suit on. He says. Our cornerbacks are as disinterested at tackling someone as a young kid coming out to play football for the first time. So he just went in. And I think, listen, I'm not putting words in his mouth, but it's plays like this, where they're throwing it out to Debo, the blockers are in front, and it's kind of like, well, it's not, let's get the hell out of here. Slay retweets him eight hours ago, talking out of the side of your neck. Fine, so they, they got, here's where I come out. This does not equal five losses for the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm -hmm. They're still at the number one. They got thumped. They were not even close to this as good as the 49ers for sure. I, I'm not worried about the Eagles until if they lose to Dallas next week. If they lose to Dallas, because everything Jason's saying has merit. They have been on the field a lot. The defense was maybe beat up, blah, blah, blah. It's late in the season. You got thumped by a really good team. 
If you go and then lose to Dallas, then it's like it's not only we lost to San Francisco, then the standings come into play, then we don't have that number one seed, then we've lost to two teams that matter. I mean, I think there's, I think we're reaching the NFC right now. There's some fun teams, but there's like a big four, all right? And it's Philly, and it's Detroit, and it's San Francisco, and I think it's Dallas. Yeah. If you lose to two of them back-to-back, -back, and this is a big if, then we got problems. But in, in, right now, San Francisco, they're just so good, and I keep coming back to when they're all healthy. Candidly, as a fan, it makes me very nervous watching them be this good because San Francisco, they tend to get injured. They just do. Historically, they do. And maybe it is something about their style of play, how physical it is. Mm -hmm. It's always right now when you're like, well, no one's going to beat them, that even if it's not a cataclysmic injury like a Garoppolo knee blood, it's like then they get Purdy's and protocol. It's just yep. something happens. So I don't want to put the energy out there, and I don't even believe in that nonsense. But typically with San Francisco, when they seem too good to be true, something cataclysmic happens, and I hope it doesn't. How would you guys feel if I said that looking at how the AFC teams, the top four, let's say, are playing right now in the NFC, would you, see that, would you say that home field is more important right now in the NFC maybe than the AFC just by how good? Like you can't let the 49ers have home field advantage in the playoffs because of how good they're playing right now. Uh, my argument against that would be the fact that I think that's a really good point. Miami is number one. And mm. I think if Miami can get home field advantage yep. with the, uh, everything we talk about with how hot it is people hate it. on an opposing sideline, Buffalo, uh -huh. a team that always talks about it. Yeah. I remember being in New England having to go down there late in the season. Right. It is rough. Okay. It, I think that's a huge advantage. I also think advantage. we just saw, look at this. San Fran just won by 30 points in, yeah. in Philadelphia. In Philly. uh -huh. So Doesn't it's like... Matter. You know, Philly, we could say, well, if we just get home field, that's what I think the thought was going into this day. But yeah. now, it might not even matter. Right. Yeah.